Hello and welcome to the Mad Batter channel. My name is Chris and a very happy new year to everyone for 2022. Some two or three months ago when Adobe introduced the new masking functions into Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, there was some discussion about whether there was any way to get the masks created in Lightroom into the main body of Photoshop. The answer, of course, is no. Adobe didn't provide a means to copy those masks and then apply them in Photoshop. Of course, one could argue that there was no need for them to do that because Photoshop has its own selection functions, which are at least as good and in many ways better and more detailed. Anyway, I've been thinking about this and I've come up with a workaround which will enable you to essentially get a Lightroom created mask and use it in Photoshop. It doesn't work all the time and it works better on some Im images than others, but I'll show you the, the workaround here. So here we are in Lightroom with this photo of some yellow taxis. And let's say we wanted to change the color of the taxis. In order to save time, I've already created the mask, which I'll now show to you. So I've got mine set up as white on black. And the first thing was to do a select subject, which got most of the taxis, but it also got some of these umbrellas behind, as you can see. So then did a subtract color range to get rid of as much of the green as I could. Unfortunately, also got rid of some of the yellow on the cab. So then we did another add color range to get all this yellow back. Another subtract color range to try and get rid of more stuff around the taxis. Then another add color range to add in this taxi here and these two at the end, which were a somewhat dark yellow and weren't caught by the first um, su subject mask. We then did another add color range to get all the yellow on these end taxis. But of course that also brought in stuff up top and bottom we don't want. So to get rid of that, there's a linear subtract mask here and a linear subtract mask there. We then have a subtract brush to get rid of some of this stuff around the taxis. And then this one, as you can see, some of the yellow has not been properly selected. So we add an add brush to get as much of the yellow as we can. So that's a fairly good selection of the yellow color. So the next thing we do is we need to create a virtual copy of this. So I'll go back to the grid view, right click on the image and go create virtual copy. And now we we'll go back to the develop module and you see we still have our mask. And now what we need to do, we'll get rid of the show overlay, is make some changes on this copy image to make the selection stand out. So with a dark image, you would probably make the masked area very bright and with a bright image you'd make it dark. On a mixed image you might give it a strong tint in a colour not represented in the image. It simply serves to make it as easy as possible when you get the image into Photoshop to be able to select the masked area to recreate the selection. On this image, as there is, an, as there is a mixture of light and dark tones, I think the best approach is to apply a bright tint to the mask. So I'll start by taking the hue into a sort of deep purple colour. Something like that. Now in order to make it even more distinct, Reduce the contrast, add some clarity, negative dehaze, and increase the saturation. 
all the way to 100 now this is too bright so we'll reduce this by about two stops so that's a fairly distinct color which should suffice when we get it into photoshop to be able to isolate the uh, mask so having done that we need to select both the virtual copy and the original image and to take them into photoshop we right click editing and open as layers in photoshop so here we are in photoshop and the two images from lightroom have loaded as layers the top layer is the original and the bottom layer is the virtual copy where we changed the taxis to purple what we need to do now is to select this purple color to in effect transfer the mask in Lightroom into Photoshop. Now with a distinct color like this the best way is to go to select color range. That's select purple color and now we'll add the add to selection and get all these other shades of purple and, and this sort of purpley pink. What you need to do is get as many of the variations in purple as we can. That doesn't look too bad. Okay. That'll do. Press OK. So there's our selection. Now we don't need this layer anymore. So we'll go to the top layer. Now we will need to refine the selection. One way is to go into quick mask mode by pressing the Q key. I have mine set up to show the selection in red and then we could paint on the quick mask to add or detract from the selection. But if we're going to use an adjustment layer, we might also go straight to that and amend the selection on the mask of the adjustment layer. So Q to get out of selection mode, select the top layer and then go to the adjustment layers, hue saturation and you'll see that the selection is embedded in the mask. White is selected, black is not selected and grey is partially selected. Now we haven't got anything outside the taxi area but some of the selection here is not perfect, it's sort of grey rather than white. Now we could just paint on that if you're in normal mode if you paint over black it'll turn it white control z to undo that but if you're in overlay mode it won't affect anything black it'll convert gray to white but it won't hurt black and if you paint it with black it will convert gray to black but won't affect white so we can paint fairly indiscriminately and it won't affect any of the black unselected areas. As ever with Photoshop, the longer you take and the more careful you are, the better the result you'll get. But that doesn't look too bad. So now we'll alt click on the mask again and we can go into the settings for hue and saturation and move to whatever colour we want. Let's how about a nice bluey colour. Now you see there are some areas that haven't been fully selected. So if we go back to the mask and now paint in normal mode carefully, left bracket key to break the brush smaller. You can get some of these areas. fine tuning I think there's many of them a bit there a bit there a bit on the roof and that's about it I think so that in effect is how you convert a Lightroom mask into a selection in Photoshop. 
hope you found this useful and if you did or you learned something perhaps you could give the video a like otherwise many thanks for watching